But I am going to read to you what the Holy Ghost spoke to me this morning. As I sit up on the side of my bed, in that motel room, he awakened me. Of course, I had my alarm set at 5 to get up, but he woke me up at 4.17 a.m. Sometimes on Saturday night, I go to sleep with praise music. Sometimes. Play it. Because I want the atmosphere to be right when I wake up. Hello? I don't look for a remote control. I don't look for a computer screen or a phone. Come on, somebody. I just I want to be be hearing something that's set in the atmosphere. And my eyes open, and I sit up on the side of the bed, and I came to tears because I heard him say these words. Whew. How comfortable is God? in your life say that with me how comfortable is God in your life and immediately brother young these scriptures just came racing into my spirit and I began to weep Psalms 132 3 through 5 he said surely I will not come let, let me just yeah just read 3 through 5 surely I will not come up into the tabernacle of my house nor go up into my bed I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids, listen to this, until I find out a place for the Lord God and habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. And if you'll skip down to verses 8, it says, Arise, O Lord, into thy rest, thou in the ark of thy strength. David made this declaration. He said, I will not go up into the tabernacle of my house. That means the comfort of my house. He said, I won't even go to bed. I won't seek my rest. I won't even give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids. Listen here. Until I find out a place, until I find God a place, a habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. In other words, he says, I will not seek my rest until I seek God's rest. In other words, then he goes on and says, let him arise unto his rest him in the ark or the power of his strength in other words David was saying God I will not seek my comfort until I make my life comfortable for you and I thought about a story I read many years ago studying about this large man massive man he had some kind of thyroid problem and he was a very large man and so heavy brother young when he would go into many places he'd have to select certain places where he could see it I mean this is how heavy he was he just couldn't sit anywhere because he'd be brought to shame because most likely he couldn't either fit in it or it couldn't hold him up and often because of his size even his own family even his own kin wouldn't have much to do with him they were kind of embarrassed of him and often he'd make up excuses to go by their house and maybe he was asking if he could use the shovel or if he he just he didn't need it he was just asking th just because he wanted to see his his own and often when he'd go in places making excuses though he didn't have need of anything that he was making excuses about he just wanted to see people he loved and he'd often look around keeping his coat on and his hat on, not looking to hang it up or sit down because as he studied some of the places in the house or the building, the furniture, he thought, that can't hold me or that's too small for me. I, I can't sit down, so all I can do is just visit. He didn't tell them that. and He'd leave and his heart would be heavy, heavier than he was and just, just broken because he couldn't find a place to sit down with the ones he loved. There weren't no room for him to sit down with the ones he loved. And friend, I'm telling you, that's our God. He is the kabod, the glory, the heavy weight of eternity. Kabod's the Hebrew name for the glory of God. It means the weight of God. Somebody shout, he's heavy. He's large. He's massive. He's huge. But do we make room? Do we make place for his hugeness? Do we make room for his greatness in our life? Come on, somebody. And God asked me that question this morning. And he said, Marvin, go ask my people. Is God, 
How comfortable is God in your life? In Acts 2, verses 3, the Bible said, And cloven tongues appeared unto them and sat upon them. This is when they were filled with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. Somebody shout, The fire of God appeared. How did it appear? As sitting on them. Somebody shout, The Holy Ghost is looking somewhere he can sit down. He's looking for somewhere that can hold him where he can rest at. And too often the subject and topic scripturally, and it has much to say, I ain't gonna quote all those scriptures, I could go on quote, is about our rest. But God has a rest, because in Isaiah 62, in verses one, he's, listen how big he is, since I'm talking about his greatness. In Isaiah 62, verses one, he said, the heavens is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Look at your neighbor, say, welcome to his footstool. It's just where I prop my feet up at. The heavens is his throne. Somebody shout, he sits in eternity. He inhabits eternity, Isaiah 57 and 15. He ain't in it, he's on it. He sits on it. Somebody shout, God's throne's called forever. He sits on forever. He ain't in forever, forever's in him. He sits on it. And the earth is his footstool. But he goes on and he says, all these things have I made with my hand. He said, but where's the house you built for me? I believe it's Isaiah 66. He said, where is the house you built for me? And he said, where is my rest? God says, look at here. I'm so big, I sit in forever. The heavens is my throne, the earth is my footstool, but I'm looking for somewhere I can rest. And he says, this is the one I'm going to look to. This is the man I'll look to. The one that has a poor and contrite spirit or heart or a humbled heart that has humbled itself before me and that trembles at my word. In other words, God says, I'm looking for a little you. Come on, somebody that can hold a big me. I, I, I'm looking for somebody in this earth that I call my footstool, amen, that I can come and sit down on. Somewhere I can rest. The Bible said again, he made in Acts 2 and 3, that the Holy Ghost sat on them that day. Isaiah 11 and 2, Isaiah prophesied about the Messiah. He said, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Say that with me. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Can God rest on you? Or does he just have to visit you? Does he just have to walk in every now and then and look around and touch you a little bit and hug you maybe and just have to back away and walk out because there's no room? In Matthew 21, he came to his house, the place of his rest. And when he got there, he was displeased by what he saw and in the streets that day, the Pharisees and Sadducees were displeased, sore displeased, the Bible said in verses 15, because all the people were crying, Hosanna, amen, to the son of David. In other words, calling Jesus Messiah. And the Bible said that Jesus grieved in his heart and he said unto them, in verse 16, have you never read, quoting from Psalms 8 and 2, out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained perfected praise? Listen, verse 17 of Matthew 21, tragically, it says, he left them and lodged in Bethany. Somebody say to lodge. That's what you do when you're on the road somewhere. They call it lodging or, or you, you get a motel or something. You, you stay to rest or you stop to rest. Come on, somebody. Jesus wanted to rest in Jerusalem. He, he wanted to sit down right there. What did he do when he went to Bethany? Somebody shouted, he raised a dead man called Lazarus from the grave. Jesus was wanting to raise some dead folks out of the grave that day. Somebody shouted, he was wanting to send a revival. He was wanting to do signs and wonders and miracles. He was wanting to explode that whole region with his power. But the leaders, the religious leaders, made him uncomfortable. And somebody shouted, he left them. 
he left. Somebody shout, Jesus still leaves. It don't mean he forsakes, but he does leave. And he says, I'm tired of having to leave. I'm tired of just having to come and then go. I'm tired of just touching and having to go. I need somewhere I can sit down at. Somebody shout, he comes to stay, but often he can't. He wants to lodge with his people. He wants to, he, he, he's tired. He, I hear the Lord say, I, I'm tired of just giving visitations. I want you to become my habitation. I want to inhabit with you. I want to, come on somebody, I want you to be my habitat. I want you to be the place I can just sit down. Come on somebody. And David gave us the key, this is how you do it. Uh, you don't seek your rest first, you seek his. He said, I ain't going to sleep. Come on, somebody shout, it requires a sacrifice. He's talking about praying is what he's talking about. David's talking about being intimate with God. I'm not laying my head down on my pillow. I'm not doing anything, amen, to get my rest until I give God room in my life until I make him a place, amen, to come and inhabit me and sit down with me. How comfortable is God in your life? Does he just have to touch and go? Come and go. What's the first thing you do when you wake up? Is God comfortable with you? Whew. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Arise, O Lord, into thy rest. Thou in the ark of your strength. Psalms 132.8 David said, God, I'm not going to lay down on my bed until I make you a bed. Until I give you some room. He said, Lord, get up and lay down. That's what he said. Arise to your rest. Somebody shout, if you'll give God a rest in place, you'll see him rise. When you can find a rest in place in your life, that means he's first. That means you seek him first before you seek your iPhone. You seek him first before you do your laptop. You seek him first before you do the food. You seek him first before you seek anything else. And you make him a place. God says, I'll rise in your midst. I am the ark of my strength. The ark is his glory. His manifest moving presence. Come on, son, which we know New Testament reveals as Jesus. But still, he said, I'll rise among you and I'll just show off. I'll, I'll throw my signs and wonders around, my miracles, my heavy weight, my kabod. I'll throw it around if you'll find me a place to sit down in your life. Lord Jesus, we want to be like you. And scripture is clear. Isaiah 11 and 2. Isaiah said the Spirit of God rested on you. When the Holy Ghost came down on you, he says, I can sit here. Because he's made room for me. He's made time for me. What Jesus tell him in John 11. He said, I have many things to say unto you. But you're not able to bear it right now. Or John 13, rather. Jesus told his disciples that. He said, he, he's, somebody shout, heavy. He said, I got some heavy things, in other words, to say. I got some stuff I will just want to divinely drop into you. He said, but you can't hold it. You can't handle it right now. Amen. As a man of God preaching the word of the Lord over 25 years, I've been to many of places I quickly knew by when I was preaching what he had put in me was too heavy for those that were hearing. It would touch them, but it couldn't sit on them. I know how frustrating that is, and if that's frustrating to me, I know it's got to really be a grieving to him. Somebody say, God's wanting to say things to you, but there's just some things he can't say 
until he can find a place of comfort in you. Until he can find that resting place in you. Come on. Say it again. David said, I'm not going to sleep in my house. I'm not laying down to rest until I find God a place. If you'll let that become your principle concerning prayer, he'll never be far. He'll never walk around talking about, I just don't know what he's saying. You won't live a life that's like, I don't know, I just can't feel it. Hallelujah. How comfortable is God in your life? Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, thank you for this word. Prophetic and proclaimed, preached. Thank you for your word. God, to you be glory. For the Lord says, as many as I love, I chasten and I rebuke them. Therefore, be zealous and repent. For behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and will open the door, I will come into him and sup with him, and he will me. Revelation 3, 19 and 20. Somebody say, Daddy loves us. Abba loves us because he wants us to return, to come back to that place. He's, he's, he's standing at the door, just like Brother Adam was singing. He's, Behold, he said. It means don't just hear it, see it. See it in the theater. Of your, I'm standing there every day of your life, and I'm knocking. It's, has anybody ever come to your door and they knock and knock and you knew they were knocking and you were like, I ain't won't let I ain't open the door now. And have you ever been on the other end? Well you knock and you knew good and well they was there, but they would not open that door. I'm afraid Jesus is doing more knocking than we are opening. And there's a lot of times, Brother Adam, we can't even hear his knocking. Because he knocks with his voice. We got folks today that know, they know, they can quote more recent news than they can these ancient words. Especially during this election cycle, people can quote Hillary Clinton, they can quote Donald Trump, the latest thing they said, and they can't even quote this Bible. Is God comfortable in your life? Come on, somebody. Quote the latest politician. Come on, somebody, but can't even quote the greatest one who ever walked this earth. See, if you've neglected this, and that's just something you lay around, and occasionally you read it like you would any other book, God says, I'm uncomfortable. Because he said, I'm looking for my resting place, my house, Isaiah 66. And he said, it'll be among those that humble themselves. And it'll be among those that tremble at my word. Somebody say, tremble at his word. My God, tremble. That don't mean I'm scared of it. That don't mean I'm scared to take it and, and hear what it is he's got to say. It's a reverence he's showing. A trembling reverence. Hallelujah. Because he is his word, John 1 and 1. His name's the word of God, Revelation 19 and 13. How in the world can God be comfortable if this is not resting in your life? Because he is his word. Lord, you want to say things. You, man, there's so much you want to say to us that we just ain't had the time to make you a resting place above our own. Hallelujah. Every day his voice is gonna knock saying open to me. Come away with me. Come away with me. Never too late. It's not too late, it's not too late for you. 
nothing but a revealing of how far away you really have gotten from him. And I don't say that in reference to me because the word ain't come from me, it come through me. Amen? Come on somebody, but this is it. This is, this is where it's at. And we need a refreshing often of this topic right here. Come on somebody. Amen? Hallelujah. Somebody shout, I've not prayed until I've spent time with God. Just because you prayed don't mean you spent time with God. And I believe you understand that. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. To God be the glory. Come on, Brother Young. I, I believe I've done what the Holy Ghost has put my heart to do. Amen. I would say, forgive me. I hadn't laid hands on you and prophesied, but I can't. Because Holy Ghost didn't tell me to do that. You know, I had a preacher years ago who told me. He said, uh, and he was doing what I was doing at the time. And the topic got brought up about services, you know, and how they're conducted. And I knew he was sent by somebody to try to tell me some, you know, what I need to do different. And people would use me more. This, and I, I could see beneath that. I thought, Lord, if he knew how dumb he looked, how I see what he's doing. I know it. I, I knew his heart. By the Spirit of God, I knew it. And I thought, man, I'd hate to be on his end. Amen. Because, I mean, just look like a dummy to me. Wavis. But anyhow, he kept telling me, he said, well, I've learned to keep my messages within 40 to 45 minutes. And he said, and I've, I've made it a point to make sure that the gifts are operating in the altar service and, and we're speaking over people and speaking to them. And I was thinking in my mind, yeah, tell them what they want. And I said, how in the world can somebody who says they got the spirit of in them, they're led by the spirit, have now took on the method of witchcraft and manipulation? Come on, somebody. Just to get applauds and shouts. Come on, somebody. And a lot of these same people that shouting, amen, in the revival the next week will be backslidden right back out in the world. A lot of them often. Come on, somebody. But I'm telling you, the substance that I'm giving you today by the Spirit of God, amen, was not rehearsed. Praise God. The Holy Ghost just laid it in my spirit, amen, today. And, and, and I'm telling you, this stuff is what will root you. This is what will keep you. And, friend, if we've ever needed a root that's deep, it's in the hour we in. Come on, because many are being plucked up by the roots. Come on, somebody. It's Jude verses 12, and they're falling away from him. If you'll do what I told you today by the Spirit of God before you lay down at night and after you arise in the morning, Ask yourself, how comfortable is God in my life? And do like David and say, I will not seek my rest 
until I find a resting place in my life for him. Amen. He'll come. I'm telling you, he'll be so close. Man, you'll feel like you're going to explode. Praise God. If you'll do what was said today, you'll see God do what he said. Amen. Such a great word today. Father God, my God, my we repent as a body unto you today. Being the head of this house, Father God, I repent for this ministry. God, we don't want any restrictions. God, but we want ourselves yielded unto you that you will have a resting place. Father God, we don't want to become habitual in prayer. God, we don't want to come as a thing to do on a schedule. God, by my God, my home, I saw you. God, but we want to live a convicted life before you, Father God, that we will hear your word. We will always receive your chastisement. God, and we do today, Lord God, and we repent, Lord God, and we move, oh Lord God, in the direction of having a place for you to rest with us individually today, God. We thank you, Lord God, for your prophet. We thank you, Lord God, for your word. It's not hard, Father. It's received with love as it was sent with love today, Father God. We receive your voice, O Lord God, into our lives speaking. That is good for us. That is good for your people. God, we thank you for it today, for being mindful, God, of the things that we need. O Lord God, and we set ourselves, O Lord God, apart to be used in your kingdom work. Use, O Lord God, this place, this house, this body, God, to bring forth fruit. Meek, O Lord God, for your kingdom. God, it will be bountiful supply. Many needs will be blessed and met, O Lord God. Many will be delivered and set free. God, because we accept your word. We accept your truth. God, and we are walk, O Lord God, with everything you give us, Father God, we receive through power and authority of your word. We thank you for your word today. Thank you, Lord God, for your time with us. I pray, Father God, it won't be a visitation. It will be an occupation, Father God. God, we're open unto you, and we do thank you for the word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.